our most gracious Father who art in heaven, we come before you, Jehovah, King of glory, for who you are, you are almighty Father. And we thank you for this opportunity you've granted us this day also, that we may come and learn of how you want us to work for you. May you help us, Lord, to continue being in your presence at the time appointed and continue to give us wisdom and intelligence in this work. We ask this trusting and living through the mighty name of your dear son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, um, there are some uh, trucks there. Steve, you can help me to share those trucks as a uh, I welcome everyone for, for this uh, class and this presentation. I believe that you have been feeling at home and feeling at the feet of Jesus above more, above all feeling at the presence of the Lord and ready to learn. Isn't that true? Yes, you can give me one, uh, one truck. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, for those who missed yesterday, we tackled a topic, a call to medical missionary work. And uh, I believe if you have not gotten the handout, you will be able to have it so that we can follow together and also be able to read. Now, another thing that, uh, I want to, to make another statement I want to give is that let us keep time and make sure that at the stipulated time of the uh, stipulated in the program timetable, we need to be here. Well, uh, we need to understand what gospel medical missionary work. We studied that yesterday that it is working according to Christ's method. And that is the only method that is going to finish the work. And it entails not only treatment, but it entails reaching out to humanity in all facets of life and bring them to Jesus Christ. That is the gospel medical missionary that is going to finish the work. In Romans chapter five, verses 10, says that he came to reconcile us and by his life we shall be saved. That life of Jesus Christ demonstrated to the world is what is going to bring an end. That is what is going to vindicate the character of God. And that is what is going to invite people to the last message of mercy and to invite them to the truth and they will be able to make decision for Jesus Christ. That is what the third angel's message is. It brings us into a practical, personal, intimate, and, um, and a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. Righteousness by faith, the faith of Jesus Christ lived by those who profess to be his children. Well, uh, Today, we are going to begin a series, uh, series in uh, institutional work. And the reason why we are here is to be useful to the community or to the church, the community in our homes, in the whole world, giving a practical message uh, in diet reform, health reform, lived and more so in the line of preparation of healthful foods, uh, foods that are able to reach out to the hearts of men. Well, we have different institutions. Um, for those who are writing, you will be writing because there are some things that I will not repeat, but if you capture something, you can write it uh, and be engaged. I've given you the pamphlet so that you can be writing. Make notes on them, write your name there, make notes on them uh, so that you can be able to remember. 
Well, we have various institutions that have been mentioned in 1MR. Our main or guideline or instruction is found in one manuscript release, page 228, paragraph two. That is our, um, our guideline. It actually tells us our mission. It tells us our objective. It tells us what we are supposed to, uh, to give to the world and the manner in which you're supposed to give it unto the world. God's purpose in giving the third angel's message is to prepare who? A people to do what? To stand true to God during which time? Time of investigative judgment. Uh, aren't we in investigative judgment time? Yes. And for us to stand, we have to be practical. We must have our publishing houses. What we do must publish the name of Jesus Christ. What we eat, what we dress, how we interact with the people. And the message that we share to the people must be true. And then we must have sanitariums or places of treatment where we can share the love of Jesus Christ with them. It may be a home, it may be at a facility, it may be any place that God may direct us into. And the third institution we were uh, we mentioned was um, hygienic restaurant where food preparation, healthy hygienic food preparations are made. And this will invite people into the truth and to know how to live healthily. Because the Bible says, is it 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 18? That know you know that your body is a what? The temple of the Lord. In the Holy Ghost is in it, the Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ is in our, uh, in our mind and that controls our life, the manner on the, our behaviors and our character. Well, so this is the, the major institution that makes us to be here and uh, uh, actually to study more about it because the world needs it more. We also study that we need schools. And when I speak about school, it begins with what we are doing here. It begins with what you are doing in your house teaching your family first, teaching your church and teaching the community and then to the world. Teaching them what? Teaching them the truth, that they may know the truth and the truth shall do what? Set them free. That is what the world needs. Everywhere the world needs a power that will give them mastery over sin, a power that will give them health, peace and life. So those are, those are points that we must know. Why are we here? To give health, peace, and life. And who is, uh, who is the center of health, peace, and life? Jesus Christ, I am the way, the life, and truth. John 14, verses 27, my peace I give unto you. It is the life of Jesus Christ, living in harmony with the principle of heaven. We talked about um, another institution was treatment rooms. We need to be able to have treatment rooms. We can have a walking treatment room. Christ was having walking treatment rooms or places. He healed people everywhere he went to. We are walking uh, healing agencies. The Bible says in Psalms 107, and verses 20 that he sent his word and healed them. So in our mouth, what comes out is the word, the healing word. And Christ, when he spoke, it was so. We can also, when we are connected with Jesus Christ, we are able to communicate that to the world. Another interesting institution that we need to think about is uh, food factories. Now, when we speak about food factories, we are not waiting to see a factory. For example, we can say um, 
Uh, here in Kenya, we have factories that make foodstuffs, uh, that make flour for uh, flour for cooking, that make bread. I'm not speaking in a sense, the higher sense like that. I speak starting from the simplest sense. In your house, in your house, your kitchen is a food factory, your garden. And actually the garden is the major food factory for the whole world. In Genesis chapter two, verses 15, what did God do? He planted a garden. He planted a garden for who? For man. And so that is the major source of food for us, a food factory. And factory that we need to know is our hygienic gardens. We need to have hygienic gardens. This message is not complete without hygienic gardens or farms or everyone engaging in farm work. It is so important, why? We are told that for want of food and raiment, what will the devil do? He will, he will win the whole world to himself. He shall control the world. And there's a time that is coming, no buying and no selling. Now before the close of probation, we are supposed when we are squeezed out with our lives, what we live, we should be able to give the world a better solution. We need to know how to sew our dresses. We need how to plant our gardens without any inorganic matter. Farming God's way. I believe next week we will have a practical class on that. And another thing, we must know how to prepare foods that we can share with other people. We must know how to bake. We must know how to, uh, to clean water in a natural way. We must know how to farm also hygienically. We must know how to prepare clothes for people. This is a work of the occupation that is done during the day of atonement. Do you know that? That is the occupation that we, we need to have. Now, let's go to, uh, to our presentation today, hygienic restaurants. Hygienic restaurants, as the name mentions, it, uh, it means that it is an, a restaurant, it's a place where it's an outlet for food, where people can go and eat. This is hygienic. Hygienic in what sense? Hygiene means something that is healthy, something that has sanity, something that is presented in truth, and something that is aimed at rescue or helping people. Creating a lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle for people, hygienic restaurant. So it is not just an ordinary food that is being made there. It is hygienic. It means that it is complete in the sense that God wants it to be. Are we together? You know that in the world today, food has been a snare to many. A snare in one sense, a snare that is, that is tapping them or trapping them to death. In Psalms chapter, one, chapter 69 and verses 22, uh, the Bible says that uh, let their table be a snare unto them. So the table has been a snare in the manner it is presented, but God wants us to prepare hygienic food that are going to restore the health of people. That is going to make them build this body and restore it so that they cannot just live as healthy physical beings, but healthy spiritual beings. We are not cooking healthy food for people who are going to, to remain in this world. We are preparing, our call is to prepare food for people whom we are preparing for translation or for heaven. Are we together? Are you getting me? Yeah, you're not just going to cook in your house. And if you are a mother or you are a, a, a daughter of someone, you're just cooking there for daddy or for mommy or for your wife or your husband or for your, 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 your family so that they can live and 
not get sick and stay in this world. No, keep reminding them that we are preparing for heaven. Are we together? That is the main work that we are doing here. Now, what is the objective and mission of hygienic restaurant? Now, in the world there, we have normal hotels that are acting as food outlets. And they're different. There are many types of food outlets. Have you seen hawkers cooking water, cooking biscuits, cooking soft drinks? Those are food outlets. And those are walking restaurants, as, uh, as we can say. Those who are selling water, those are walking uh, restaurants. <laughs> but God is calling us for something better. I hope we are understanding this thing. Are we together? God is calling us for something higher than that. Something that is going to fix the, the problem of the world. Well, um, when we are endeavoring to this work, we must know what God requires us to follow. What pattern are we supposed to follow in this line of hygienic restaurant? Well, don't think about going to um, uh, a big town. Think about this thing in your home. Are you following me? <laughs> think about it in your home first, where you have your child, your wife, your husband, or when you're living alone yourself. When someone visits you, what does he or she see? Is it something that can preach to the hearts of men to come and seek for that truth? Now, in HFM, that is Health Food Ministry, page 14, paragraph 3 says, the health food business is one of the Lord's own instrumentalities to supply a necessity. What is his main work? It is an instrumentality. What is an instrument? If I want to write, can everyone show me his pen or her pen? That is an instrument of writing. Without it, you cannot write. Now, the instrumentality to supply a necessity. Do you know the basic needs? Christ says in Matthew chapter uh, chapter six, from verses twenty-five, we have food, we have raiment, and we also have a roof, a roof on our top. Those are necessities of life, of which in Matthew six thirty-three says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is the most important necessity. But that which makes us to live in this world temporarily, the supply of food, one of the instrumentality, one of the uh, objects that we use to supply a necessity of those who are hungry. Remember, we read in the morning, Matthew chapter 25, verses. I think 39 or 40 about, I was naked and you did what? You clothed me. I was hungered and you did what? You fed me. I was sick and you visited me. One of the instrumentality of meeting the needs of people, the necessity of food is the hygienic restaurant. And it says, the heavenly provider of all foods will not leave his people in ignorance in regard to the preparation of best foods. Number one, underline the word necessity. It is necessary. It is an instrument. And then it helps us to prepare best foods. Best food. Make sure that, or what you need to know here that God is calling you to make best what? Best food. That is what the world needs for all times and occasions. All what? Times and occasions. It doesn't mean that if you leave this place, you be careless outside there. If you go visit your grandmother or your mother at home, it, there's nothing less lesser than that that you now be careless about it. You must fit in all occasions. That is the calling that God is giving unto us. So its objective 
is to supply the needs, the necessity, as well as preparing best foods. Taken in, have you understood that? Yeah, that is your work. Now, number two, question number two, where should they be located? That is a question that we need to ask ourselves. Where should they be located? Manuscript 111, 902. Are you following? Where should they be located? The opening of a unique restaurant is a work that God will have done in the cities. Where is it done? In the cities. Where is it done? Yes. So the question I can ask myself, why in the cities? Yet the message of the Lord is out of the cities and the cities is not a place to be so that we can reach the people who are in the, in the cities. It is a mechanism. We are not to live there, but it is an outlet or a place of outreach. It is a mission center in the city. Are you following me? Yeah, the cities are to be reached from the outpost. That is the message. That is the plan. Everything done according to the plan of the Lord. And if wisely conducted, so it requires wisdom. If wisely conducted, what happens? If wisely conducted, this restaurant will be missionary centers. Missionary centers. I pray that our homes should be missionary centers or where you come from, a missionary center. The facility or any place that God will place you to do, if you establish this in the city or in the centers, in the towns, it should be a missionary center. It is not a place for you to go and just earn money and sit and bail and go do your own temporal issues. It is a place that God has blessed you to reach the cities. The money that is found there is to further God's work, to help your temporal needs, to help your family, and to help the gospel and to establish other institutions. How should they be conducted? Now, we have learned that they are established in the cities. How are we to do it? How should we conduct it? You know, if someone, the Bible says that if someone wants to build something or a house, he must count the cost. You must sit down, you know the objective. Why am I building a home? For this and this and this. Many people build home for luxury and for people to come and see how they are rich. But what God is calling us to establish, whether it be our homes or this institution in any city or in any town, is to make sure that the truth is gotten out. Now, how are you going to do it practically? What are you going to do? So, Father Steve, I, cannot, I, I, I can tell you that it is not just going to sell juices for people and sitting down and counting money at the end of the day that today we have such and such amount. No, it is not that. In fact, the first thing you should be analyzing is what have you achieved for Jesus Christ? So in manuscript 114, 902 says, those working in them should have at hand publications on what? Health. Publications on what? Health. On health and temperance topics and on other faces of gospel truth to give to those coming to meet. Let no one just come and eat and go. However busy, people may be lining. That is why people need to organize that someone gives a word, a trap. Or you have set a place where you get in. You have, even in your menu, there is some Bible verses written there. No one can just, even by just entering the room, you just see something different from the normal larger hotels. Are we together? Yeah. So this is how we have got, we, it must be organized. Publications on health, new start, lifestyle diseases, 
the word of God and any Bible or our, any Bible truth, the warning message. We must have articles having the warning message, the three angels' messages. People must just see a difference, a difference in what you are doing. I tell you here is already a testimony. I tell you this place, the whole village can fail to go by vegetables in that town there, but come here. Why? Because they know that there is something better being offered. The vegetables here are unique. They are not sprayed. They are organic. And this is home. Now, in our centers, if you establish something like this in the cities, what, everything you sell must be something that is healthy. And this calls you to also tying this work with garden missionary work. For a hygienic restaurant to work well, there must be a garden somewhere. For you to sell the people where your conscience is 100% sure that I am offering the best to the people, you must have a garden tied to this hygienic restaurant. Now, uh, the faces of gospel and truth, what truth, present truth? Let me ask us a question. What is the present truth for this time? The three angels' messages. Now, if you read early writing, page 63 says, the sanctuary in connection with the 2300 days, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ are the present truth that ministers need to give to the people. Do we have the three angels' messages in the sanctuary? Yes, we have. Do we have the health message in the sanctuary? Yes, we have. Do we have um, state of the dead in the sanctuary? Yes, so we must have traps that speaks about the truth for this time. Truth for this time. Do you understand your work? Are you getting me? Are you with me? Yes. Um, uh, so one, there must be publication on them. This tells me that there needs to be a printing machine in the what? In the hygienic crystal. There must be a printing machine. Or if not, uh, uh, if we don't have that, there must be trust. Let not your hygienic restaurant, and even your home, not have a trust. You will not be a Christian. You will not know your work. Every person you meet must have something to read. Now, uh, it continued to say, arrangements should be made to hold meetings in connection with our restaurant. Let not the year end without even one meeting. It is a place of creating awareness. You must organize, maybe if it is after two months or one month or weekly, if you can, sensitizing people on health issues, expose, and that's why we are learning here how to learn, how to cook and do medical missionary work. If today we just say, today we are going to teach people this, simple remedies it is an expo for that day another day we are just going to teach the world healthy meal because you've got people cow's milk is not good for you because it robs your system of the calcium then you have to show people that this is how we do what we do it if it is about hygienic dressing you don't just condemn people outside there, yet they, you cannot point them to where they find solution. You will have hurt them more. We need to give them and they need to see that. If it's about bread, they should not just, you should not just say yeast and the bread, yet you've not prepared something that is what? What about if it is sugar that people use today? What about coffee, chocolate, and all these beverages? What should you need? What do you need to do to prepare health? And if people understand that your uh, products are healthy, they will flock the institution. They will flock your home. So there must be a meeting. You organize for a meeting. That is why, if you can have a PA address system, it needs to be there for creating awareness. If God bless you, you have some means, 
even you can put some screen in this hygienic restaurant. It is not to, for people to come and watch football, Arsenal and Manchester, no, or soap opera, Alejandro and whosoever. They are coming. You have a series of three angels messages playing right there. People are not just coming to, to sit and, and, uh, and feel their body there, no, no, no. There must be a way in which they are reached. So let a room be provided where the patron can be invited to lecture on the science of health and Christian temperance. Now for all hygienic restaurants, there must be a patron. A patron is an elderly person married who is mature, sober, uh, full in and doing good, patience and charity. Someone who is having wisdom, who knows how to guide the youth. Because most of the times, the youth are the ones going to work in the hygienic restaurant. You know that? Yes, so they need guidance. There's a lot of temptation for this youth. They need someone, an elderly person who will be constantly looking and checking for the spiritual progress of those who are working there. Now, you need to teach about Christian temperance. And another thing, um, in, in, uh, receive instruction on the preparation of wholesome food and on other important subjects. Other important subjects of truth, it can be family life, it can be Bible truth, it can be uh, maybe a preparation of good farms, demonstration of that. And another thing he says, in this meeting, there should be prayer and singing and what? Talks. We are not just having workers who do not know how to pray. We forget to pray. For those working in this institution, you must have time for what? For praying. Even if it is two minutes, people must pray. And singing and talks. Now, this is where music ministry comes. I've been thinking about it. If our children, are, we had someone who's interested in playing music, we will have a day that we've organized just to teach people the right music. Someone with a violin or a piano or a harp or a flute, just to teach the people. It is a busy place, I tell you. It's a very interesting place to work. You don't find any time to think about the world it is. It is just heaven on earth. Well, it says also, uh, not only on health and temperance topics, but also on other appropriate Bible subjects. As the people are taught how to preserve physical health, many opportunities will be found to sow the seeds of the gospel of the kingdom. So there must be opportunity for this in our hygienic restaurant. Those who come to our restaurant should be supplied with reading what? Matter. There must be reading material. The attention should be called to our literature on temperance and dietetic reform and leaflets treating on the lessons of Christ, uh, uh, treating on the uh, teachings on the lessons of Christ should be also be given the burden of supplying this reading matter should be shared by all our people. So let your burden be all who have visited us today. Did we give something for them? And you are working there. By the way, when they come to you, they, they, they think you're a doctor. You say, I'm not a doctor. I am a Bible health educator. Are you, are you seeing that? No, even if you are a medical missionary, I tell people that I'm not a doctor, I am a Bible health educator. Your, your, your first work as a medical missionary is not to give remedies. You are a health Bible educator. You educate people on Bible hygienic principles or principles of health. If they call you to any place to teach, I am not a doctor. I am a what? A Bible health educator. How are we together? If you go to someone's home, you are a Bible health 
educator. Yes, uh, all who come should be given something to read. We've read that. It may be that many will leave the truck and read, but some among those in those on whose hands you place it may be searching for light. They will read and study what you give them and then pass it on to others. You know that we are living in a world that people are not interested in the word of God. Many people are not interested. So, well, if you offer it and they, they may take it, some people, by the way, take these trucks and they just keep them for themselves. You don't know God, God's word. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter, uh, is it 60 or 63? That says that uh, the word of God shall do, will do that which it has been told to do. It will not turn to the Lord what? Void. This truck will not turn to God void. It must do what? Yeah, something may, someone will see it, reject the truth, or accept it. You have done your part. Are we together? Yeah, so we must be prepared to understand our work and be ready to do the work that God has given us. Now, I want us to, uh, there are some questions there in your time. You need to answer them and follow keenly. What are the branches of the hygienic restaurant? It has its branches. It has its components. In HS, HFM, HF. M, health food ministry, page 10, paragraph two. Are you there? Yes, it says in San Francisco, a hygienic restaurant has been opened. Also a food store and treatment rooms. Now, which other institutions are connected with the hygienic restaurants? There must be a food store and a treatment room and also a hall is there, a food store and treatment rooms. Here is where in the food store, we can store the cereals. We can store, um, if we have, you can also do an outlet for seedlings or vegetables in the hygienic restaurants. You can also um, have formulas, baby formulas or uh, children flour for cooking, uh, for cooking their porridge, diabetic flour. You can have health formulas, the syrups. You know, in our hygienic restaurant, it should be made in a higher standard where you already have custom made remedies or uh, even guidelines on some foodstuffs to direct your people. Yes, in the treatment room, it needs to have what is needed for treatment. Hydrotherapy kit. What do you think hydrotherapy kit contains? Towels, buckets. It can have basin. It can have, you can even have a sauna somewhere. A massage bed. Yes. You must also have a counseling room where people are counseled. I'm going to teach us here physical examination and how we can know a person is sick and what to do uh, in such a case. There must be a private room. You need to have um, examination tools or kids, vital signs monitors like high blood pressure, weighing machine and uh, even uh, thermometers. If you are gifted, if you have a means and you can have a machine, biometric machine, uh, all these are supposed to be in our hygienic restroom. So this is going to make you to know what you are doing. When someone visits this place, maybe on the place for counseling, he says that these people know what they are doing. You are not guessing. No, we are not here to guess. We are here to do the right thing, to be on the 
on to the point. And so you must know how to do physical examination. Yes, when someone is coming to you, you should already know this person is having, maybe suffering from this and this. The way the person walk, the way the person uh, facial appearance, all those is uh, guideline skills for you to know what you are supposed to handle. And you need to have a lot of wisdom to know how to deal with the people. Not all that comes to the hygienic restaurant will require, uh, those who have come for counseling will require some um, of those herbal remedies. Some of them you just need to prescribe good diet to them. How are we together? So it calls for a people who are having wisdom. Now, the last part of this uh, presentation that I want to handle is workers that are connected to this institution. Now, all of us here are workers and we have come to train for this. Please don't disappoint God. Don't disappoint who? Don't disappoint God. Don't disappoint God. Now, um, in HFM 12, paragraph three, says that every hygienic restaurant should be a school. Every hygienic restaurant should be a what? It is a school for learning. Everyone who comes is learning. Many people know that a school, a school must have a 12 hour session or calendar. No, <laughs> a school can just be even 30 minutes. That is a school to me where people are being educated. In fact, in Ministry of Healing, page 127, paragraph one says, the hope of better things is in the education of people on what? On health principles. What the world need is to educate, 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 agitate, agitate, agitate. What are you agitating for? Right principles. Your main work is to teach people right principles. Mark that even if we don't, you don't remember anything for this, your work is to educate people on right principles of living. Yeah, so it must be a school and it begins in your house. Your house is a what? A school. The workers connected with it should be constantly studying and experimenting. What are you doing? Constantly and doing what? You're not just going to be a, a, a sorry to use the word, a, a dwarf in, in, in this line, but you need to be having a library. That tells me that the hygienic restaurant should be having a, lab, a library. There must be books. Which books do you think should be in our uh, hygienic restaurant in the library? Number one. Minister of Healing number two. Councils on, yes, councils on health, or diet and food. Which other book do you think should be there? The Desire of Ages, Steps to Christ, Great Controversy, Medical Ministry, Call to Medical Evangelism. Yes, the Bible. You need to be having Bible Bibles so that those who have constantly come. And that is why I tell you, there needs many workers. It's not only one person or two or three, it can be even be 10. Where you book appointment for people. And we have, you have track. I'm going to take us through how to give, how to uh, tap the mind of people to interest the people on this work. You have even a track for questions and answers or where people write their name when they're interested and they would love to be follow to, to follow up and they would love to come for studies. And so there will call there will be a need of someone who will be taking them through the truth. Are we together? There should there will be a need of someone to uh, someone to to help them in taking them through the truth. It may be an elder or the patron or a Bible worker in that place. Well, so uh, it's 
continue to say, now experimenting, you must be just experimenting daily what you're cooking or preparing there. If it is juices, you experiment daily. You try to study the environment that people live. What is available? How can they be prepared in a healthy manner? If like in, in Uganda, where you come from, there is potatoes and cassava and millet and sorghum and eggplants and all those things, you experiment to make something better for them. How are we together? Yeah. And the best, uh, uh, the best uh, hygienic uh, Christian cook will always use that which is in the locality to meet the needs of the people. Well, it says, uh, now the question is here, yeah, what is the responsibility of churches in connection to the health food ministry? In every place, where there is a church, instructions should be given in regard to the preparation of simple, helpful foods for the use of those who wish to live in accordance with the principles of health reform. And then it says, and the church members should impart to the people of their neighborhood the light they receive on this subject. It is a living, busy place, I tell you, my friends. Very busy, always. The church, every church member should not say that we don't have a work. From the youngest child to the oldest person in the, in the church, there is a work to do. Teaching the people. In the hygienic restaurant, you must, you should all, uh, create awareness of people so that one day they can come for a seminar. Are we together? So for a health seminar. And in that health seminar, you've attached the word of God and the final warning that they need to know before they leave the place. Yes, yeah, so another thing that is important, it says uh, in HFM 16.2, the workers in our restaurant should live in such con close connection with God, close connection with God, that they will recognize the promptings of his spirit to talk personally about spiritual things to such and such a one who comes to the restaurant. When self is crucified and Christ is formed within the hope of glory, we shall reveal in thought, word, and deed the reality of our beliefs in the truth. The Lord will be with us, and through us, the Holy Spirit will work to reach those who are out of Christ. You must be connected with Christ. You must be someone who is prayerful. Someone who studies his word, the word of God, you must demonstrate purity of life. In the restaurant, I tell you, you will, if you're someone who is easily angered, you may slap someone. So sorry, so sad to do such a thing. Or you may even just, your heart can be broken. You need to be someone who has a deep heart of love. Even when they step on your, because people are coming there, you will find drunkards. You will find people who are just uh, impatient. What do you do? Do you tell them, go away? You must show with a lot of courtesy that please, we don't have this and this. Please help us to do what? You can wait for a what? For a minute. You must learn to be very courteous. You must learn to be very very uh, gentle. Your words, uh, this finishing line, your words must be pure words. In Psalms chapter 12, verses 7 says, the words of the Lord are pure words. They are purified seven times. Your words must be pure words, words of encouragement. Don't engage in, in gossiping. I know three or four ladies may be working in that place. And ladies are known for gossiping. Please don't do that. It is not a work for doing what? Gossiping or talking about others. It is a place of praying for soul. It is a place of not being very jealous or envy or evil surmising. 
it is not a place for courtship or trying to flirt with the ladies. It is a place for consecration and for work. Are we together? It is a place of consecration. It is a place where God is preparing you for heaven. Are we ready for such a work? Are you ready for that such a work? May God help us as we prepare for this work and we can pray to him. Our most gracious Father was in heaven. We thank you for this great work that you are calling us into. We are your children and you are our father. We pray that you may help us. The standard is too high for us. But with you, Christ was risen and is set in the right hand of the father. You are now able to give us victory and to save us from the atoms. And as we diligently seek you, dear Father, you are able to give us the reward, which is eternal life, which is wisdom from heaven. Be with us and cleanse us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.